All right, welcome to another Clear Talk. Uh, we've got uh, with me today Chris Peterson, the founder and president of Vector Firm. Uh, welcome, Chris. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's great to have Chris here. He started Vector Firm back in 2010 uh, as a provider and of outsourced sales leadership, sales process consulting. Today, Vector Firm offers sales training, content marketing services, sales management consulting, and professional speaking services. Vector Firm has worked with over 140 clients since 2010 on projects ranging from two day strategic sales planning sessions to multi year retained engagements. Through his sales academy, Vector Firm has over 500 paid subscribers with dozens of companies. Finally, Chris has been a paid speaker at over 150 events spanning six countries over three continents. Thanks very much for being with me today, Chris. Oh, you got it. Absolutely. So sales as uh, sales is a, a topic that's very close to both yourself and myself. I know I've been in this industry for 25 years. We're a little bit different where we're both helping uh, systems integrators run their businesses better. Um, we're really focused on um, sales software that helps them manage the sales cycle. And you're more on the consulting side and the application side. So I know in my experience that there's, there's quite a bit of confusion. Sort of the sales world can be very regimented. It can also be the bit of the wild west. And one of the things, the two two fundamental concepts that I find there's a lot of confusion about is the terms wrapped around opportunity management and sales forecasting. And quite often they're blended. I'll talk to somebody and they'll switch those two topics in the exact same conversation. So I wanted to find out from you as the, the real expert in the room, what is your take on this? Are they the same? Are they different? And if it's the latter, can you explain the difference between the two? It, yeah, it, it, they, they are different. Um, but John, most, most organizations, even well-run organizations, don't differentiate them. It's, it's not necessarily a, a common practice to look at opportunity management and forecasting. It's different. In fact, a lot of organizations will simply take, you know, if I'm doing a forecast for the next quarter, they'll just look at the pipeline and say, okay, right. that's cool, let's go. And um, the, the, the difference really is this, and I, I think this is a good analogy. If you are a competitive runner, maybe not even competitive, let's say you're training and you do, I don't know, uh, three or four half marathons a year, let's just say. So let's say four to keep it quarterly. We'll make okay. it really, really parallel to, to forecasting. Well, imagine that those four half marathons that you're doing, that's your forecasting, right? It's a, it's a finite race, so to speak. It's a, it's a finite thing that you're doing. Um, and, and you do it once every quarter. Opportunity management is the training leading up to it. It's the, it's the running the five days a week. It's the long runs. It's the short, fast runs, it's the interval training. It's some of the weight training you're doing. It's the diet. It's, it's everything that leads up to it. That's opportunity management. And you might think, okay, Chris, I get it, but it's all running. And you're right. It's all running. Right. But, but the difference is, is that the training, the ongoing keeping up with your opportunity, what that does is it keeps you in good shape. But what really matters is that forecasting, because that is now we're going to go back to the sales world. That's what you are committing to your company, mm -hmm. who is then committing back to either investors or a bank or a board, or if you're a public company, you know, the public. Um, that's when you have to perform. That's when you have to be right on. And it's not just an aggregate of opportunity management. It's different. Um, because you might train a certain way for that run, but if it's raining on the day of the half marathon, then you got to just do what's necessary to compete when it's raining. Right. And, and it's right. the same with forecasting. It's just, you don't just, it's not just another day of running. It's a day of, it's a day of real compete. This is real performing. Um, so, and, and I, I think you're going to ask some questions later about more of the detail, which, which I think we'll get into it more, but um, for an opportunity management process, 
you're really looking at predicting when a sales opportunity is going to close and what the probability of that closing right. in, in real world. Yes. A forecast is about what do I think I can sell this quarter? Yep. So for the same opportunity, you might have an opportunity that's scheduled to close in, we'll call it April 18th of 2024. But you might forecast it at a lower probability for the first quarter because there's a smaller right. chance you can bring it in. So yeah, that, Chris, I, that, I definitely. I'm going to get into the minutia of that in a few minutes. I just want to to come back to your first concept because I think yeah. your, your analogy of running, whether you're a runner or not, that's to me that makes perfect sense, right? You cannot plan for marathons a year, <laughs> let alone the first one, unless you are right. doing that daily work, right? And I think that's a lot of the missing piece. And you know, just to go back to the concept first of of opportunity management. That's another area I find a lot of confusion in is, is there are groups that say, well, it's just an art form. I let my salespeople do their thing and, and, and that's it. And then the other camp is it's a very regimented process. I'm instilling, this is how we qualify. This is how we disqualify. And then I'll invest time and money in a qualified opportunity as far as, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, if I'm going to lose a deal, I want to lose it early. I don't want to lose it late. So what, do you, what's your perspective on that balancing act between sort of the wild west, I'm letting them do what they want to do versus somebody that's really process oriented. And again, I'm just focusing in on the opportunity, the day-to-day -day runs that we, that we go through. You know, I, I, yeah, no, I got it, John. That's, that's a great question. And, and I, I'm, I'm, so I'm going back years, and, and this might have been the very first blog post that I wrote, um, is sales a science or an art? Mm -hmm. And and what I've concluded over the years, because I don't know if you know this or not, I have a mechanical engineering degree. I've always been mathematical. I just, um, I love I love the world of selling, and I'm very competitive, and, and I enjoy I enjoy the science and the art behind it, but I'm, I'm very, very, you know, analytical. Mm -hmm. um, so... The answer I came up with years ago is, is it a science or it's an art is this, it's a science that's performed by artists. So what I mean specifically for opportunity management is the best type of opportunity management has certain structure to it, certain guidelines. Let's say there are four different stages of probability. Let's say there are time, like, Hey, update your, Update your uh, pipeline every Thursday at five. Right. And then let the artists go at it, right? Let them be themselves. Let them use some judgment, but there's got, there has to be some guardrails. Mm -hmm. So when opportunity management is more of a science, but you still let them be, be who they are within the structure. Forecasting is where it's a real art. Because forecasting right. is where I'm going to take that official structure. These are my 31 opportunities that might close next quarter, right? Or, or I'm sorry, that are scheduled to close, period, right? Yep. Now I'm going to be a wild, wild west person and say, here's what I think I can bring in next quarter. And here are the probabilities of that. So the forecasting is more of an artist, uh, more of a wild, wild west scenario. Opportunity management needs to have more structure. Um, does that make sense? Absolutely. And I subscribe to that same, same methodology and that's where our software really aligns with that too. And it allows both of them to exist. So if you, if you, if you think about our funnel definition, it really is, I like to use the term it's guardrails. So I just want yeah. you to play within these parameters. I don't want you to miss this really critical step of qualifying. Um, but, but, but you can, you have the latitude to stick handle, to use a Canadian hockey term, <laughs> stick handle through those particular things that, that are happening with the prospects buying cycle, which rarely ever aligns with what's going on from what we want them to do. So very much, I subscribe to that, that same thing. So when we, when we look at, you, you talked a little bit about the day-to-day -day activities and then more, getting more into the art form of what I can pull into this quarter, that promise, and we'll get into that detail in a minute. How do you find the best way to document and report on that, those two different functions? Is there a distinction right, so this, there that you can you can articulate? There, there is, and people are are surprised when I when I, I I say this because I'm a believer in in you know 
the Solutions 360, uh, I believe in having a software manage your opportunities and really your relationship management period with your, mm -hmm. your client base. Um, however, when you forecast, you take it out of there. Maybe you hit print and print out yourself a nice list of all your opportunities. Right. And you create a forecast. I like doing it on PowerPoint. And, 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 and we, we've got templates that we provide for, you know, we build out for our clients. Mm -hmm. And then you present a forecast to your leadership. And that forecast, not to get into specifics, but it can, it, it can be, you can have an upside number, you have a commit number. But what this, for, you might be thinking, and anyone listening to this is thinking, why don't they just update it in the system? And you can do that. In fact, y'all have a, a, a new feature that enables you to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's great too. We'll just take that. But what it forces somebody to do when they have to type this out into a template of, of PowerPoint is now I'm being a real artist. Right. Now I'm really thinking through these opportunities. Wait a minute. I know this is scheduled to close on March 15th, but boy, I've worked with them so many times. Or here's another great example. You know, I know that this is, has gotten past the quoting stage and it should be in our opportunity management it should be listed at 70% maybe because we've got a verbal commitment, but they have given us verbal commitments before and they've always gone with their nephew's company. You know, right. so in opportunity management, you should keep it at that stage, right? Because it's it's structure, you know, the yeah. guardrails. But now it's like, you know, am I for? I'm going to give it a thirty percent because I'm right. committing a number to my company. So right. that's how I feel. That should be pre presented ninety nine percent of the time when you're doing all opportunity management. You need to have a software system doing it, like Solutions Three Hundred and Sixty. That forecast every quarter, or perhaps every month if you do monthly. That forecast, yep. that that's where you create something separate and you go through that exercise. And every time people, every time someone does it, they get, why do I have to do this stuff? Right. And then 20 minutes later when they're done with it, they think, I'm glad I went through that exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, you know, I like your, I like the idea of, of making it a completely separate exercise, separate reporting tool, because it does make it real, makes them, makes them really think about it. As you said, mm -hmm. right, you're now making a commitment and, and this goes beyond the sales world, right? You're essentially making a commitment to your operations department, which is a commitment to procurement, a, pro a commitment to senior management, right? The entire business makes decisions based upon what sales commits to closing. Um, so I think it's treating them separately like that, accepting that they're separate is, is one thing, but to, to really treat it as a completely separate process is critical. Now, I, I wanted to circle back just quickly because we've used this term, this percentage probability of closing a couple times here. And I just want to explore that just a little bit, just to make sure we don't assume everybody sort of agrees what that is. Um, so do you want to explain a little bit about your, your take on that? Yeah. So um, let's talk about the opportunity management side of things. I believe that there needs to be uh, a, a few yeah. Uh, stages that define a, um, a sales process or the term that um, Bell uses is phases, right? Yep. Um, and it, it shouldn't be 15. <laughs> you, know, it should, um, you, you should have just, you know, a handful, let's say somewhere between four and six, maybe. And six is probably high. But and those stages have a probability tied to them. So here's what I mean. Uh, just keeping something really simple. Let's say that you have a stage called um, proposed and that's where you've delivered a proposal and you have a probability tied to that of 35%. So what you're saying is in general, when we propose an opportunity, we deliver a proposal, 35% of those close. And then you have a next stage of getting a verbal um, affirmation, not a commitment, but this looks really good or something. Well, yeah. maybe now it goes up to 60%, right? And and, and, and then you keep going. Maybe then there's a verbal commitment. Now you're at 80%. And then it's in contracting. Maybe it's at 90% now. But the key to this is that whatever that stage is, the probability stays static. So in right. other words, if you have a stage of quoted that's at 35%, it can never be anything but 35% as long as it's at the quoted stage. It can't go right. up to 50% or 60% until you get that verbal affirmation or it goes to the next stage or whatever. 
and 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 many people listening are thinking, well, that's that's ridiculous, Chris, because there are many times I quote something that I know I'm going to win. It's a 90 percenter, but it's only at the quote stage. Totally understand that. But unless you only have three opportunities in your pipeline and most salespeople have, you know, 30 or more. Right. Those probabilities end up aggregating out. It just does. Yep. And so you've Absolutely. got a few at the quoted stage that are at 35% that are probably really 90 percenters. And you got a few maybe at the 60% stage that really should be at the 4% stage or whatever. Right. It might be, right? So um, it ends up averaging out. And, and, and the reason you want to do this is it controls variables. If you've got 10 salespeople, allowing those 10 salespeople to take the probability on their gut feel, it's going to exponentially multiply out of control. Yep, absolutely. But if they can think about it by stage, then that's then they're in good shape. Right. Now on forecasting, and I, I won't spend that much time on forecasting, John, but on forecasting, you throw that out. On forecasting, it's what probability do I think I have to close this this coming quarter, period. Right. Um, and that that's where you may have a, you may have a 90 percenter to close in April, but hey, how much am I going mean, to, what, what probability can I close it before the end of March for the first quarter? Right. Well, that's probably not 90%, but it's, it might be 40. And yeah. That's where you're yeah. And that's, you know, it's interesting that that's the crux of the, 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 the conversations I have quite often talking to different, those different camps, business owners or sales managers that really they believe in the art form. I want the salesperson's gut feel to be represented and those that are process driven. And you mentioned that we did make some changes to our mm -hmm. software recently, and it was to address both of that. And it's, it's, we did it in such a way it's not a compromise. So we still have the system driven mm -hmm. probability of close, which is, which again, the other nuance to that, it's not linear, right? You could be, you know, first two stages, you're at 30, 35, 40, and then all of a sudden you do something at a, a stage that really differentiates yourself and knocks out most of the competition. Then you could jump to that 60%. Yep. So what we've done is we've had the two close dates, the, you know, the, the close date you set near, near the beginning when you know what their decision date is. And then we've added this forecast close, which is that quarterly, I'm committing to this. We did add a separate just free form percentage field, which is that the gut feel. I know they, you know, we've qualified them, but I know it's going to go to the lowest bidder. So I've got them in the system is driven by, you know, a 70%, but now we put it back to a 40 and we just report on them differently. So it just helps that sales manager interpret what the salesperson is doing from the process standpoint, but also from their subjective perspective. So so and that timing, that, do they do they choose that forecast close date or does it just automatically go to the next month? They choose. They choose that. That's beautiful. No, I yep. love that. Yep. And then we have a column showing that, okay, these are all overdue. So now it's, in, and everything's color coded. So anything in, you know, if you're having a quick review of the sales rep, everything in red is what we need to talk about because you've neglected it or left it behind, yep. you know, those types of things. So I think it's going to work really well. But I know, I know I've taken a lot of your time, Chris, and this is just the beginning of, of a lot of these types of conversations. So I really want to thank you for this. That I think you've really clarified anything. Is there anything you want to sort of wrap up with? Um, well, the key to all of this yep. is with, with our clients, meaning system integration companies, yep. is the buy-in by leadership. And um, to to hold the salespeople, even your superstars accountable to this process, not too tightly mm -hmm. because they're just going to ignore you, but hold them accountable to a, to, to certain, you know, I've got this analogy where I show a baseball player and I, and, 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 and I show three baseball players and they all have different stances, completely different up here, right. down here. But when they come to contact, they all look the same. Right. And the point is, is there are five things that that, hitter has to do in order to be successful you know, um, you know the front foot has to be closed you know the head has to be you know, all this stuff right these five yeah. five just five things and if they do those five things they can act however they want infinitely <laughs> outside of that yeah and do that with this process right as a manager say look these are the right. five things or the three things we need you to do in your opportunity management and your forecasting how you get there i don't care right, right. but you've got to as a leader 
coach them, teach them and hold them accountable to this. And if you do that and you got to do it for like, I always say five quarters yep. because it, it takes that one overlapping quarter, you know, uh, yep. to really drive home. Wow. They're serious. <laughs> and, and Hey, <laughs> this isn't, this is not that hard to do and it's making me a better salesperson. Right. Exactly. Uh, so I, I've never run across a salesperson that knows their business and knows their pipeline that is not successful. Right. Now I have run across successful salespeople that have no idea what's in their pipeline just because <laughs> they work they work 16 hours a day and right. they're and and they're just built to 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 right. close business, right? But any salespeople I've met that knows their pipeline, they're successful. Yeah. Yeah, we get them in this model, then they just become that much more effective without That's right. being in the 16 hours. So absolutely. I love the, the baseball analogy again. It's a matter of, you know, just we're let's make all going to make contact with the ball. Then we're going to work on getting on base type thing. And that's exactly that's right. the model we've got. So that's great. Now, Chris, I, again, just want to thank you for your time. I know, you know, you talk about sales management and, and what we, you know, some of the topics we've talked about today can be really hard to, to get to work, right? To actually make a difference and execute in a business. So the, those companies that are listening today, how can they get in touch with you? I know you offer a bunch of different services, quick engagements, evaluations of where they are and full-blown, let's dive in and really make change. So what's the best way to, to reach out to you for those that are interested? Great. Thanks, John, for that opportunity. Uh, so you can you can email me. Uh, we I have a staff. I've got a team. Right. But I, I'm I'm it's great, John. Actually, the last two years, I've been taking on a business development role, which is awesome. Right. Um, uh, my email is C Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N at VectorFirm.com. Go to VectorFirm.com. Check it out. Um, and you can you can fill out. Um, you know, a, a form there and we'll get back to you and have a discovery call. The discovery calls are easy. They take, look, we, we, we've, we've worked with under contract over 140 system integration companies mm -hmm. and we would probably have talked to who knows, 10 times that many. Right. We, we understand the business. We're going to pretty quickly be able to figure out if we can help you or not. So yeah. discovery call will take 30 minutes. Um, Excellent. So that's, that's the best way. Uh, and, and we love doing these calls because one out of three, we typically um, we, we typically can 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 fit yep. and 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 help. And the other two, we usually help just from the call. Right. Hey, right. you really don't need to pay us to this, but why don't you try this? Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Or you'll help them next year or the year after. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. I uh, I hope that uh, as a result of this, some people can get some real help from you. And again, I wanted to thank you very much for joining me on Clear Talk today. We'll awesome. see you Thanks soon. For, thanks for having me, John. You're welcome. My pleasure.